last video I explained you about the on the basis of scale there are two types of large scale and small scale maps. Now in this I am going to tell you about the on the basis of content ok. In this maps are divided in three parts that is physical map, political map and thematic map you know. So first we should know a week I will tell you about the political map. What are the political map? Political maps show the countries of the world. They also show another international they also show international borders, state, capitals, cities and towns. They are drawn on small scale. They give a very little information just they show the boundaries, areas about the states. Now we are coming to the physical map. These maps show the physical features of the region of the earth like mountains, rivers, plateaus, coastal areas and water bodies. These are also drawn, they are also drawn on small scale maps. They give a variety of information about the particular thing. Next is coming thematic map. Thematic maps uh, represent particular features like vegetation of an area, distribution of minerals and industries etc. Now when we are doing a map work, it is not easy to write down each and everything on map. So, for this we use language of map. So, there are few el important elements of map that is title, direction, scale, key and grid system. First is coming title. You know when we are doing something on map, we should give some topic ki on which part, on which relevant we are doing work. For that we have to give some topic or title for that. So all maps have a title which describes the reader what the map is about. Next is coming direction. Direction is an es essential component of map study. Without direction one can never reach their own destination. So when uh, directions Direction is a very important part of map to locate the exact location. You must have seen on the map that on the all four sides there are the numbers written in degree which help them to locate the places on their correct places. So, what is the impo what are the importance of direction? We study the phenomena of celestial bodies. We know that our earth rotates from west to east on its axis. We refer these directions to find out the destinations on the map. Now how to find the direction? If we do not know the direction, we cannot do any kind of map work. For that we are using magnetic compass. There are few things which we are using to know the direction. The first is magnetic compass. The most popular method of finding direction is to use a magnetic compass. The needle of compass always points towards the north. When the compass is placed on a flat surface the needle will swing and come to rest in the north south direction. The second way to know the direction is with the help of rising sun. We can find direction with the help of sun. Third one with the help of pole star. The pole star always point towards the north and is always visible in the sky. When we know the north direction, it makes us easy to know the other three cardinal direction. So cardinal direction means north, south, east, west. Now these cardinal direction points are further divided into intermediate direction. First is northwest, second is northeast, then southwest, southeast for accuracy in map study. Now 
next part is coming scale a scale is a measuring line that shows the relation of the distance between two places on map to their actual distance on land a definition of scale is a ratio between a distance measured on map and corresponding distance on land connecting the two points represented by the same unit for example when we say that a, the scale of a map is 1 cm to 1 km, we mean that 1 cm on the map represents 1 km on the ground. Map may be large scale maps or small scale maps. Large scale maps depict the geographical features of a small area in detail. The small scale maps also show only the important features of the large scale. Now, there are Types of scale. Distance can be measured by means of scale in three ways. In a statement manner, second in a numerical fraction that is representative fraction and third is graphic or the linear scale. Now, first is coming a statement. In this method, the scale is expressed in word example 1 cm on the map represents 50 km on the ground. This method is not very popular as it does not give any accurate measurement. Second one is coming representative fraction. The numerical fraction method is also called representative fraction. This method shows the ratio between the distance on the map to the distance on the ground. This, ca this scale can be used by any country in the world. Now for example, if the representative fraction is 1 is to 50,000, it would mean that 1 centimeter on the map represents 50,000 centimeter on the ground. So, the formula comes representative fraction is equal to distance on the map upon distance on the ground. It can be written as representative fraction is equal to 1 upon 50,000. Okay. Now, next is coming linear scale. This scale represents the relationship between a particular distance on the map and on the actual distance on the earth. It is drawn according to the statement in such a way that the distance can be calculated most accurately on the map. Okay. So, these are the things, these are the languages which make easy to do the map work. Now, next is coming the most important thing is conventional sign. Conventional signs are the language of sign. It is impossible for us to write down everything on map. We have to show the vegetation or we have to show the forest or we have to show the mountains or rivers, distributes. We cannot make a whole drawing or we cannot make a, or we cannot write a whole sentences. For that, we use some symbols, signs. Those symbols are known as conventional signs. On every map, certain signs, symbols and letters are used to represent the features on the earth's surface. These are called conventional signs and symbols. A variety of features, both natural and man-made, are depicted with the help of symbols on the map. Example, river, pond, settlements, roads and trees. These symbols are accepted universally and are used all over the world. A list of conventional signs and symbol is called legend means exact meaning okay last one is coming significance of map study and colors in a legend now colors colors play a very important role in maps maps have become invaluable in today's particular world as they serve as a storehouses of information. We can find out destination by using global posting system. Topographical maps portray the natural features, man-made features and the cultural features using appropriate colors and symbols. 
for map study and map pointing colors are important in conventional signs and symbols these colors are universally accepted now for example yellow color yellow color depicts cultivable land plateaus deserts and plain green color we use for forest area or lowland area white color is for rocky area or bad land hence uncultivatable land blue is for perennial land wells perennial streams lakes ponds water bodies in general brown color is for contour lines they hides and relief features like mountains black is for dry streams and survey trees red is for permanent huts settlements cities etc so these colors represents the things easily we can find out the meaning of map ki what they are trying to make us understand so thank you boys in next class we will study about the representation of political boundaries okay thank you